The following program is paid for by the friends and partners of Joyce Meyer Ministries. How many of you have read Power Thoughts, the book Power Thoughts? Okay. Well, I hope you don't mind this, but I'm going to teach out of this book this weekend. And even though you've read the book, I can guarantee you that I'll say things that are not in the book and you're going to get some different things out of it. I believe that this is one of the most important things that we can teach people, that their thoughts are extremely powerful. And not only that their thoughts are powerful, but your thoughts actually turn into your life in the future. I'm sure we've heard the saying, well, it's all in your mind. Well, to be honest, a lot of our successes our victories are all in our mind. That's where they start. You can think yourself into a mess. You can think yourself into a place of victory. One of the reasons why people buy so many resources in the mind is because it's one of the hardest areas in our life to get under control and to keep under control. I actually believe that we will daily have to choose to not think wrong things and to think right things. And it's something that you have to do on purpose. You can't just think it's going to just happen. You don't get it just by praying. It's something that you have to do on purpose. The mind is the battlefield. It's the area where Satan attacks us. If he can get us to believe lies, then we are deceived. And deception is terrible because you're believing something that's not true, but it becomes your reality. Now let me, I want to make that clear to you. There are people here that are deceived. There are people watching by TV that are deceived. You may be a Christian. You may have been in church for 20 years, but there may be areas in your life where you're deceived. For example, I'll just give you one example from my life. I was abused in my childhood by my dad sexually in many other ways. And so I believe the lie that Satan told me that I would always have a second rate life. I just, I believe that I would always have not as good a life as I could have had, that I was broken, I, I had been uh, uh, messed up, I was damaged merchandise now, and that probably no man would ever want me, and, and if I ever did get married, when they found out what had happened to me, then they wouldn't want me anymore. And so, even though that's not true at all according to the Word of God, and we can see the life that God has given me now, one that is far superior to anything that I could ever imagine, I had to let God change my thinking before any of that would take place. You got to learn how to think right before you can live right. God has got a good plan for your life, but if you don't believe it, God's not going to be able to do it. You can't think it's for somebody else. You have to believe and understand that it's for you. Proverbs 23, 7 says, as a man thinks in his heart, so is he. Well, I like to say, where the mind goes, the man follows. We're in Hershey, Pennsylvania this weekend. If you came here thinking about chocolate, you will get it before you leave. <clears throat> Now that's just the way it is. We become what we think. The way you talk to yourself, self-talk, and we all have it. The way you talk to yourself is one of the most important things in your life because you can never get beyond what you think especially what you think of yourself. You can never get beyond, you can never be greater than what you think of yourself. Thinking prepares us for action. If you think about what somebody has done to you long enough, the next time you see them, you are gonna show anger. You're gonna say something that maybe you shouldn't say. You're gonna behave in a way that would not be appropriate to behave. We have to learn, and I don't want you to miss this, this is one of the important things in this book, which by the way is available for you this weekend. We have stacks and stacks of them because I want everybody to go home with one. You say, well, why should I buy it if you're going to preach out of it? Because to think that you can hear something once and you've got it, or to think that you can read something once and you've got it, is one of the biggest mistakes that we make. We think too highly of ourselves. 
and it takes going over and over and over and over something to retrain our mind or as the Bible says to renew our mind I read something interesting just this morning in, a, in another book that I was reading he said 90% of what we do is done out of our subconscious it's done out of habit and that once something is in your subconscious you can never get it out but you can dilute it so it's like if you have a poisonous stagnant pool of water which is what some of our minds was like before God got into our life and started trying to teach us how to think right how many of you would say that's right your mind was like a stagnant pool of dirty water I mean suspicious and wrong imaginations and wicked thoughts and anger and greed and you know distrust and all these things so it's like a stagnant stinking pool of water but what you can do is you can pour chlorine into that water and you put enough of it in there and you can purify it to the point where it could actually be drinkable well it's the same way with your mind you, those thoughts may always be there somewhere in your subconscious but you can put so much of the Word of God in you you can renew your mind to such a degree that all that old stuff will never come up because the first thing that's going to come up in you is the truth of God's Word amen so we have to learn how to think on purpose now this was one of the greatest finds in my life because I had no idea that I could do my own thinking I never even thought about where my thinking came from. I went to church for years and years and years and didn't know that the devil would put thoughts in my mind. And then if I didn't know the word of God, I wouldn't know how to recognize when he was lying to me. And so therefore I would just, you know, I just lived according to what I thought. If I woke up in the morning and thought, I feel depressed, then I was depressed all day. If, you know, I got angry at Dave, I didn't have any ability to control my own thoughts and, and be rational and logical according to the Word of God, I would just spend the next two or three days angry until, you know, some other new thought came and I found somebody else to be angry at. And it was such a, an amazing thing for me when I realized that everything in my head was not something from me, it was not something from my circumstances much of it was just Satan dumping stuff into my brain because he wanted to control my life so that was an eye-opener and then when I found out that I actually didn't have to think what was in there that I could cast those wrong thoughts down and replace them with things that would help me now that was another big thing but it was a big fight in the beginning because I had lots and lots of wrong habits the Bible says that we can cast down wrong thoughts and renew our mind with the Word of God now some of you are aware of teaching like this some of you you're standing at a new gate tonight and you're like what I can do my own thinking do you mean if I wake up in the morning Joyce and I feel depressed I actually don't have to go around and be depressed all day no when you wake up in the morning and you think oh, this is not gonna be a good day instead of that you can say liar devil you're a liar this is the day the Lord has made I will rejoice and be glad this will be a fantastic day but what do people normally do I feel depressed <laughs> then you start looking around at everything in your life that you don't have everything everybody does that irritates you I mean, you were in a bad mood when you got up, but by the time you go to bed that night, you've got everybody else that you know in a bad mood too, because they're tired of listening to you. <laughs> and it could have all been avoided. Every bit of it could have been avoided if you would have said, that's not a God thought. I cast that down in Jesus' name, and I'm going to think something that is going to benefit me today. I have been there, done that, been around that mountain enough times, and I am not going to let the devil control my life anymore. Now, even as long as I've been walking in this, there are days where sometimes I just think, man, and it's like an all day long battle. And then I'll go for a long time. Now, at this point in my life where it's not that much of a battle because I've trained myself to do what I'm teaching you to do. Now, for those of you that maybe this is your first time to hear something like this, or maybe you've heard it, but you still have not really done your part, I'm wanting to urge you tonight to begin to do your part 
and learn how to think power thoughts, how to think thoughts that can actually benefit you. And I want to teach you how to have daily think sessions where you purposely sit down somewhere where it's quiet and you think things on purpose and speak them out loud that are in agreement with the Word of God that are going to help you begin to renew your mind. Think sessions. I used to have them, but they were all wrong. I'm so sick and tired of being the only one around here that does anything. Everybody around here takes advantage of me. All I do is work, 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 work. And you think anybody appreciates me? No. Dave goes out and plays golf. The kids go out and play. I clean the house up. They come in and mess it up. I clean it up again. I'm so sick and tired of my life. I hate this. I hate that. Anybody know what I'm talking about? I hate my job. Well, let me tell you something. There's somebody out there without a job that would love to have your job. Well, now I have think sessions every day for probably 29 years. This is the day the Lord has made. I will rejoice and be glad. Show me who I can be a blessing to today, Lord. Bless me and make me a blessing. The words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart shall be acceptable to God. God. Put a watch over my mouth so I don't sin against you with my tongue. Give me favor everywhere I go today, God. I am excited about today. This is going to be a good day. I am expecting you to do something great in my life today. Now, I want you to listen to this. Your tongue is connected to your emotions. When you sit and you talk garbage talk, all of your emotions begin to sink lower and lower and lower. Your mood gets worse and worse and worse. But even sitting here saying those positive things from the Word of God, and I'm not making this up, I could feel my, mo my emotions getting excited. Your tongue is connected to your emotions. You can talk yourself into a rotten, stinking mood, or you can talk yourself out of it. Misery is an option. I said misery is an option. Now you can be miserable if you want to be, but I have decided that I don't want to be anymore. Everybody around you can be miserable and you can still be happy if you decide to be happy. Amen. Now, Colossians 3, 2 says, set your mind and keep it set on things that are above. Now, we're going to talk a lot this weekend about this setting your mind and keeping it set. And the way you set your mind is by having these think sessions and thinking things on purpose ahead of time. Now, my husband loves sports and golf and he likes to watch sports, but golf has been his favorite sport and he really enjoys playing golf. And I'm glad that Dave has something to do that he enjoys. We make a lot of jokes about the golf, but you know, I'm really glad that he has something that he enjoys. I wasn't always glad, but I'm glad now. And, uh, you know, as, as you get older, and Dave is not old, but he's, get, he's gaining in years. And, uh, you know, as that happens, there's different things that begin to do things you wish they wouldn't do. Like, you know, this leg will go to sleep, and that hip will do something else, and this one will do something else. And, I just said to him a few months ago, I just, I just said, how, how do you think you'll handle it? Because he's always Mr. Smooth and easy and everything's okay. I said, how do you think that you would handle it if you ever got to the point where you couldn't play golf? Because it's something he really enjoys. He, now, this, this was his answer, and this is a good lesson for you. He said, I've already thought about it, and I've already set my mind that if that day ever comes that I'll be fine and be just as happy as I am if I could go out and do it. Now, that may not be for 10 or 15 years. It may never come. And actually, I think sometimes when we have our mindset that something's not going to bother us, then the devil won't even try to bother us with it because we've already made our mind up that he's not going to control us. Did you hear what I said? Now, I have already got my mindset about something too, and I did it probably 10, 15 years ago. 
I don't know if I'll be doing this all my life. And this has been, this has been my life. This has been a major, major part of my life. The speaking, the teaching, the, the getting ready, the doing these conferences. I've been doing these conferences for like 25 years. And um, so, and, and I, I love what I do. I love to teach the word. I mean, it's just like, I don't even know how to tell you how much I love what I'm doing. So I thought, you know, God, I don't want to be in a position where if I ever can't do this anymore, that all of a sudden I think I'm nobody and nothing and I have no worth and value. I don't want my identity so tied up in what I do that if I ever can't do this anymore, then I don't know who I am. So I've already thought it over. I have already set my mind. I've got my mind set that if the time ever comes when God doesn't want me to do this anymore, I'm just as valuable to him as plain Joyce Meyer as I am preacher Joyce Meyer. He loves me just as much. I can be just as valuable, maybe in a different way, but just as valuable. Now, some of you have got your mind set in some wrong directions. You've already thought, well, if this happens, I can't take it. If that happens, I'm done. If this happens, I'm out of here. One more time and I'm finished. Come on now, I'm talking to you tonight. Now, the devil can't read your mind, but if you utter that out of your mouth, <laughs> he's like, oh, just one more time. All right, here it comes. <laughs> Where you can set your mind in a brand new direction. The Bible says that to think on these things. So obviously we can think on what we want to think about because in Philippians 4, 8, it says, think on these things, whatsoever things are true and good and lovely and pure and kind and winsome and gracious and of a good report, fix your mind on these things. Every day you got to renew your mind according to Ephesians 4, 23. Daily renew your mind and your attitude. If you have a lousy day, all you have to do is think what you thought about all day and you'll find out where your lousy came from. Amen? <laughs> you can't stay angry and think love thoughts. You can't stay angry and think merciful thoughts. Every emotion, good or evil, is tied to our thoughts. Learn how to think things on purpose. You'll do a lot more for other people if you'll think about what you can do for other people. Amen? Romans 12 is a great chapter in the Bible. But one of the things that it says that's so important is that God has a good plan for your life. It says, be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed, entirely changed by the complete renewal of your mind. And prove for yourselves what is the good and the perfect will of God. So God's got a good plan for our lives, but if we ever want to see it, experience, I don't want to just sing about God's promises. I don't want to just hear sermons about God's promises. I want to have the promises. I want to see them working in my life and in my children's lives, and I do. But not because I passively sat and heard a sermon and did nothing, I have taken the Word of God and diligently over a number of years used the Word to renew my mind to get into agreement with God. If any two of you on earth agree, you shall have what you agree about. Now, the devil's on the earth, the Holy Spirit's on the earth. I don't think that's just talking about people. If you agree with the devil, you're going to get what he wants you to have. But if you get into agreement with God, the next time the devil tells you that you're not going to ever amount to anything, you need to say, I don't agree with you. I am not going to give you power by agreeing with you. I agree with God. You say, well, I'm not talking to the devil. Well, why not? Jesus did. Get thee behind me, Satan, he said. And when he was in the, in the wilderness being tempted by the devil for 40 days and 40 nights, and I might add, right before his public ministry began, 
You got to make sure that you know how to keep the devil in his place if you ever really want to be used by God. Doesn't do any good to pray for God to use you if you don't understand that where a wide door of opportunity opens, there's going to be with it many adversaries. Amen? And the devil would say something to him. Well, if you are the son of God. The devil loves to question your identity in Christ. Well, if you are a child of God, then why are all these bad things happening to you? Well, if God really loves you, then why do you have these problems in your life? Well, if God really loves you, then why hasn't he answered your prayer that you've been praying for 10 years? And the worst thing you can do is start thinking about what the devil said. That is what the mistake that Eve made. She started thinking about what the serpent said. Well, yeah, yeah, well, well, yeah, I don't know, that apple does look pretty good. I wonder why God wouldn't, yeah, well, maybe God wouldn't care if I ate that. And we know what a mess that started. <laughs> no, the minute that Satan lied to Jesus, the Bible says, and the devil said to Jesus, and then it says in Luke 4, and Jesus said to the devil, it is written, and he told him what God had to say about his lies. So if you want to have victory, you're going to have to learn how to talk back to the devil. You're going to have to learn how to think right in your head. And so that's what this weekend is going to be about. And I believe that whether you have this book yet or not, whether you've read it or not, this is going to benefit you. It's going to help you tremendously. And all of you who don't have it, you need to get your little tutus out there and get a copy because it's got a plan in it. There's a plan of action in here. And what I want to teach you to do, I'm going to talk about 12 different things, 12 different battle strategies, things that I'm going to teach you how to think on purpose, things for you to set your mind in the right direction. And what I suggested in the book was take each one of them and meditate on it for a whole week. Then you can go to the next one. But when you get to the end of the 12, I would start back with the first one, meditate on it for a whole week. If you do this over a period of time, then those, that new thinking will become such a part of you that it will dilute the old thinking and it will no longer have power over you. Can anybody say that that sounds good? All right. Now, how many of you that already have the book don't mind hearing this again? All right. Doesn't matter if you do. That's what I'm preaching, so. And you probably came too far to go home, so you're stuck. <laughs> All right. The first thing that I want to talk to you about, the first power thought that I want you to begin to meditate on is a simple one, but it's one that if we don't do it, we get ourselves in so much trouble. And it's simply this. I want you to begin to think, I can do whatever I need to do in life through Christ. I can handle whatever life brings. I can do whatever I need to do. I don't know what this day is going to bring, but whatever it is, I can handle it through Christ. Versus, I don't know if I can do that. I don't know. If that happens again, it's just going to put me over the edge. I don't think I can take that. Not one more time. I have strength for all things. Look at the scripture. I have strength for all things in Christ who empowers me. I'm ready for anything and equal to anything. Don't you love that? Through him who infuses inner strength into me. I am self-sufficient in Christ's sufficiency. I love that. I'm equal to anything. I'm ready for anything. Nothing's too much for me because God is in me and I am more than a conqueror. You know what I believe it really means when the Bible says that we are more than conquerors through Christ? This is what I really believe it means. Because years ago I said, okay, God, what does that really mean? I'm more than a conqueror. And I believe this is what God put on my heart. To be more than a conqueror means that before you ever get a problem, you already know that even if you got one, you would end up the winner. Because you can do whatever you need to do in life through Christ who strengthens you. God never allows more to come on us than what we can bear. He never allows anything to be in our life that really is too much for us. If it's in your life and you're trusting God, then it's not too much for you if you learn how to think right. You don't believe me? You want me to stay on that one point? 
See, some of you, are, now, and you know why you're reacting that way? Because some of you have spent so many years getting yourself convinced, I can't stand this. I can't do this anymore. I can't take this. I can't do this. I'm saying, if it's something that God is permitting in your life for right now, or for some reason he's not removing it right now, and you're in a situation that you can't change, hey, if you can change it, change it. But if you can't, then don't let it make you miserable. And one of the ways you can keep from letting it make you miserable is if you believe that you can handle it. Because if you don't believe you can handle it, then you are going to get weaker and weaker and weaker every day. The Bible says, this is not my idea, it says, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. I am ready for anything. I am equal for, to anything. Well, you know, we all talk to ourselves, but it's how we talk to ourselves that's very important, and especially how we talk to ourselves about ourselves and our past and our future. It's very important that you talk to yourself the way that God would talk to you if he were having a conversation with you, and you can find out what that would be by studying his word. You know, I always like to say that you're one person that you never get away from, so it's very important that you have right conversation with yourself about yourself. And today we have a very special offer for you. It's, we're calling it an action plan. You know, it's great that you watch the program, but we want you to take action after you watch the program because it's being a doer of the word that really makes a difference in your life. So today we're offering you two DVDs, four CDs, and a booklet all in a package called Developing Power Thoughts. You can think thoughts that are going to add power to your life, or you can think power-draining thoughts. You can think things that are going to leave you weak. So I believe this is going to be a real blessing to you, and I'm challenging you to get it and to learn how to think the way God wants you to think. God bless you, and have a great day. Start enjoying your life when you receive Developing Power Thoughts. Two DVDs, four CDs, a booklet, and cards with each power thought displayed to provide you with the action plan you need to change your thought life. It's available for your gift of $35 or more. Call us toll-free, 1-800-727-9673, or visit us at JoyceMeyer.org. Well, like many of you, I've gone through some very emotionally painful situations in my life. If it wasn't for the power of forgiveness, I don't think I'd be standing here today. God forgives us, and He gives us the grace to forgive others. In my new book, you'll find out you don't have to hang on to anger. You may feel it, but you don't have to keep it. You can do yourself a favor and forgive. Get my new book and find out how. Do yourself a favor. Forgive. Available now from Joyce Meyer Ministries. The proceeding was paid for by the friends and partners of Joyce Meyer Ministries.